Let me just show you in a little video this idea, just to emphasize that light comes from a from a source, which is a laser, goes through a mirror, gets split, goes out the two arms, comes back, almost cancels. But if any light goes to the uh, receivers, then we see that light. This is just showing the same idea with waves themselves, because the light comes in different waves, and how they come back and they cancel, or nearly cancel, and then what we see in the detector. So that's the basic idea. So how small is this change that we want to measure? That's the technique, but how small is it? We ultimately want to go to something like 10 to the minus 19 meters. We talk about 10 to the minus 18, but it's 10 to the minus 19 is kind of our goal. And so how small is that? Let me remind you how small it is. A meter, we all know how big a meter is. It's basically that long. The human hair, some of us have some left, uh, is about 100 microns in width. So that's 10,000 times smaller than a meter. OK, we can all handle that. The wavelength of light, like the light in the laser beam, is 100 times smaller than that. That's uh, uh, basically a mi one micron. The atomic diameter, now getting to things that are a little harder for us to visualize, but the atomic diameter is 10,000 times smaller than that. And that's 10 to the minus 10 meters. The proton, getting to something that's basic and using particle accelerators, for example, is a size of 10 to the minus 15 meters. That's 100,000 times smaller than the atom. And we want to go a factor of 10,000 smaller than that. So that's the magic and maybe the reason that people thought this would never work, uh, but it does.